So SummerSlam 2024 is tomorrow, and I'm recording this video before SmackDown airs, so I don't know if anything's going to change between now and then, but I'm going to go over the show, the seven matches, and I'm going to give you my predictions on SummerSlam 2024 from the WWE. It's going to be coming up Saturday, like I mentioned, tomorrow night in Cleveland, Ohio at the Cleveland Brown Stadium. So please feel free in the comment section to give me your predictions for the matches. I would love to know what your thought process is behind it. So don't just leave a prediction. I would like it if you told me why you feel that way. If you can. If you don't have enough time, that's okay too. So let's go ahead and get into the card. Now, the world title matches, both of them on this show, are probably not the strongest matches as far as drawing ability goes because... You've got some stars in there, don't get me wrong, but you've also got guys that been main eventers in WWE very long. Priest and Gunther both are great athletes. They've main evented all over the world, but for WWE, Priest won the title at WrestleMania and Gunther won the King of the Ring. So I want to start with that match. I believe that this is going to be the night where the, well, whatever's left of the Judgment Day, is going to betray Priest. I think this is the show to do it. I could be wrong on that. Either way, it's going to be a, a good It's gonna be a good match, I would hope. But I could totally see a situation where Gunther does end up winning and becoming the heavyweight champion of the world. He had a phenomenal run as Intercontinental Champion. He is a tremendous athlete, and I knew he was going to be a future world champion. This is the night to do it. So I do believe that they will switch it over to Gunther on this show. Now, they may not do that. They may not. They may want to give Priest an even longer run, but I do feel like Gunther was set up to win the title, and he'll probably hold it for a while, maybe till WrestleMania or the Royal Rumble. And when he does win the title, he'll be opening up himself up to new opponents, such as CM Punk versus, versus Gunther. It'd be a great match. We've already seen Drew and Gunther. We've already seen that, but it's always going to be good. And Gunther versus Seth Rollins. I think they would have a ton of chemistry. So my first pick for that match is going to be Gunther. Speaking of the King of the Ring, the Queen of the Ring, Nia Jax versus Bayley for the women's title. This one is a bit tougher to pick. I could see a situation where... Nia Jax wins the title and then Tiffy cashes in on her. Or Bailey beats Nia Jax and then Nia Jax gets angry and lays out Bailey, leading to a cash in from Tiffany Stratton. It does sort of feel like they're setting this up for Tiffany Stratton to cash in. Now, that is not a guarantee. That may not happen, but it feels like they're setting that up. However, it could be a situation where Bailey wins and then Tiffany tries to cash in but fails. The fact that they kind of sacrificed the Money in the Bank briefcase for the men on the Drew Punk feud, I feel like with that, it sort of feels like they're going to have Tiffany have a longer run with the Money in the Bank, maybe even going into next year. So I would prefer that, but it doesn't seem that like that to be the case. Logan Paul, LA Knight. So this is a tricky one because for the U.S. title, Logan Paul is in his hometown. And during the Vince McMahon era, if you're in your hometown, you're going to lose. However, this is a different era and hometown heroes can win. However, he is a heel. He is very unlikable. LA Knight, I think, will win the U.S. title. If he doesn't, it'll be because of some kind of shenanigan. But I think they're going to crown LA Knight U.S. champion. On this show. In fact, that could be the opening match. I have a feeling it will be. Sami Zayn, Braun Breaker. This is another match where I do believe this time Braun Breaker will defeat Sami Zayn. Not sure if Dragunov will get involved, but the fact that Sami beat Braun Breaker at Money in the Bank, which I was not expecting, I thought in the back of my head, well, maybe they'll do a rematch and Braun will win. And I feel like this match, it's almost a must win for Braun Breaker because. He's been pushed very well and protected, but if he keeps losing, it's not going to make him look great. Now, again, Dragunov may get involved. 
I could see it becoming a three-way, maybe for the next pay-per-view. Like, there could be a situation where Dragunov screws over Braun Breaker. Then in the three-way, Braun Breaker gets the title. You know, Sammy versus Dragunov versus Braun Breaker. It does seem like they're going in that direction, even if it's just a TV match. But if I were a betting man, I do think Braun Breaker's taking it on this show. Then we have Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley. Probably the hottest, the second hottest match on this card. This feud and the Dominic Mysterio soap opera has been some of the best stuff WWE's put out in a while when it comes to the soap opera stuff. And I do feel like since WrestleMania, Raw has been a better show. Not just because of the soap opera stuff and this whole Dominic Rhea Ripley thing, but also, and Liv Morgan, but also because of the awesome Drew McIntyre CM Punk, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. But first and foremost, I feel like a lot of people are going to assume that Rhea Ripley is going to go in there and just destroy Liv, just smash her and take her title back. In fact, this could open the show with Rhea Ripley just dominating her in two or three minutes. However, I'm not so sure about that because the fact that they did a bait and switch on Raw where Dominic went and said that he wants to be with Rhea, I've been watching pro wrestling a very, very, very long time. And one of the things they always do is try to bait and switch you. I do believe that Dominic does want to be with Liv Morgan. I do believe he will turn on Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan will retain the title. And I think that that will continue the feud beyond this. Now, if you're wondering, so they're going to turn Priest and Rhea babyface? Yes, I think the Judgment Day is going to end up being split into two different sort of factions. You've got the Priest and the Rhea Ripley version. Those two, maybe together, maybe not. They could just be independent. And then you've got JD uh, and Finn Balor as another sort of option. You know what I mean? So it does feel like it's time, but... I don't think Rhea Ripley is going to come back and get the title. She wasn't even supposed to drop it. It was because of the legitimate injury she suffered. But I still feel like to get the most out of this, you have to keep it going because it is something people care about. Maybe all the way to Bad Blood in October where you can do a Hell in a Cell with them. That way Dominic cannot interfere without breaking through the cell. That's the way I would do it. End it with Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, Hell in a Cell. But this match... Liv needs to win so that the baby face can keep chasing. That's the philosophy. Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk with Seth Rollins as the special referee. This is the hardest match to pick. The hardest one because this is my favorite feud in the company. It's been going on now for eight months. CM Punk has had that torn tricep uh, since the Royal Rumble and... It's all come down to this. I think... I think... Punk... Should probably win. But the other part of me is unsure because Drew has lost a lot lately. I could see a situation where Punk wins and then Drew tries to get revenge and beats him up after the match. I don't know what Seth Rollins' role is going to be. But we do know that Punk versus Seth is something they wanted to do at WrestleMania this year. I'm just kind of in a weird spot because I'm really looking forward to the match. This is the one where I have no idea, none, but I, if I were to lean one way, put a gun to my head, I would say Punk's going to win, then Drew's going to lay him out after. Again, I could be wrong, but that's the fun of doing these. Last but not least, Cody Rhodes, Solo Sokoa for the undisputed WWE title. This story is not about Cody, and it's not about Solo. It really isn't. This story is about Roman Reigns. Everyone is going to be on the lookout for Roman Reigns. The past five months since WrestleMania, where Solo has been rebuilding his own bloodline, got rid of Jimmy Uso, got rid of Paul Heyman, brought in the Gorillas of Destiny, Tamatonga and Tangaloa, and Jacob Fatu, with more coming in, like Hikaleo could be coming in soon. There's a lot of Samoans out there. I don't think there's a chance in hell that Solo's going to beat Cody for the title. I don't see that happening. Cody's going to retain. 
<clears throat> retain, excuse me. But the question is, will Roman Reigns, will Roman Reigns return on this show and really kick off the Bloodline Civil War? Like, actually kick it off. Maybe Jimmy comes back. Maybe Jay, because Jay, Jay's super over right now and has nothing to do. Like, he's not on this card, and that's interesting. Also, I did expect them to add Chad Gable versus Bo Dallas, Uncle Howdy, on this card. They didn't do that either, so that'll be a TV feud, or it'll get blown off on the next show, or something. I don't know, but I know Cody's going to retain. The question is, do you have Roman come out and screw Solo, or do you have Roman come out after the bell rings? And confront Cody, building up to their rematch until then Solo comes in and then maybe Roman lays out Solo. The next pay-per-view after SummerSlam that WWE's putting on is the Bash at Berlin, which is the last day of August. And I believe it's actually the day before AEW All Out. I have a feeling that they may, and I don't know for sure, but they may do the Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes rematch on that show if they decide to go in that direction or kick off the Roman Solo feud. That's the story of SummerSlam Cody versus Solo. It's will Roman Reigns appear and so my prediction is yes, Roman's going to appear to it's going to look like he's going to hit Cody but instead he's going to lay out all the new bloodline members. Maybe Paul will be there, maybe not. And then Cody will win the title. And then eventually, on SmackDown, we'll have the unlikely alliance of Cody and Roman Reigns. That is my guess. That is my prediction. That is what I think is going to happen at SummerSlam 2024. Again, leave yours in the comments. I appreciate it. Take care. And I'll see y'all tomorrow when I drop my review for SummerSlam 2024 after the show ends.